Hi, my name is Dale Maley. This video is about lettering on stained glass. I've been doing stained glass projects for about three years now. I've done over 20 different projects including your basic flat panels and many 3D type projects including clocks, kaleidoscopes, airplanes, and jewelry boxes. One thing I have not figured out is how to make lettering on stained glass. I wanted to do a new project which would be a flat panel of a building that had the town's name on it. My project needed lettering that was about three quarters of an inch tall. I also wanted to use dots to represent architectural elements and also represent the clock dial numbers. I also needed to make some small clock hands as well. To try to learn about different methods of how I could apply the letterings and other items to my project, I searched and I posted on a Facebook users group called the Stained Glass Addicts. This is a very helpful group and there's actually over 8,000 people doing stained glass that are members of the group. I did get some ideas from that group, but I really didn't find any kind of overall chart to uh, give me most of the options available for applying lettering. So, as a result of this project and the things I've learned, I developed a chart for at least eight different ways to make lettering on stained glass. So let's take a look at that chart. The chart that I developed as a result of this project has at least eight alternative ways of making lettering on stained glass. I will post a link at the end of this video if you'd like to retrieve this chart. Uh, there's the eight different ways. Uh, number one is uh, paint and kiln fire the letters. Number two is laser etch and paint. Number three is use a handheld Dremel and etch and paint. Number four is hand letter. Number five is paint through a stencil. Number six is use tinned brass letters. Number seven is apply letters using adhesive sheets or glue them on. And number eight is make the letters from the glass itself. Now we're going to study each one of these methods in the upcoming minutes of this video. The first option is to paint uh, on your lettering and then kiln fire it so that it stays on forever. One of the drawbacks of this method is it does require a significant investment on the order of $2,500 for the kiln. Then you also know how, need to know how to run the kiln and also be familiar with the uh, painting processes as well. Since I do not own a kiln and I don't really understand the processes involved, this wasn't an option for me. But if you're familiar with this, have a kiln and you're familiar with the process, this is one way to make lettering on stained glass. The second alternative for applying lettering to stained glass would be to laser etch and then paint it. This is typically done by going to a trophy shop that has the laser etch equipment. You would take your glass there, they would laser etch it, you bring it home and then you paint it and you can remove the excess paint with a razor blade. Now you also would have to understand the paint process here. Would you be using spray paint or would you use thinned enamel paint? or possibly use the Pebio brand of porcelain paint which you air dry for 24 hours and then you oven bake it 40 minutes at 325 F. So one of the concerns here would be to find a trophy shop that has that type of equipment and then the cost associated with that as well. Since my nearest trophy shop is 35 miles away I didn't really consider this an option for my project. I wanted to try to figure it out and do it myself if you really want a very neat looking uh, lettering though, there are many fine examples shown on that stained glass addicts group and they are really perfect letters when they're done. A third option would be to use a handheld Dremel and etch out your letters and then paint them. You could use a rotary Dremel tool with a carbide or diamond tool that's made for engraving or etching on glass. After you etch it, you paint it, and then you can remove the excess paint with a razor blade. So what I tried, I tried this method out. Um, to mark the letters, I used the white paint pen that I used to uh, 
mark out my stained glass pieces to cut. Then I dremeled away the white paint using a carbide bit. I found it very difficult to make straight lines using a handheld dremel and it's also hard to get a consistent depth of cut as well. So I really determined that this method was not satisfactory for my three quarter inch high block letters. The one I tried here are just simple line letters, they're not block letters. This method might be okay to initial, make a small uh, lettering for your initials on a stained glass panel. A fourth option would be to simply hand letter hand letter onto the stained glass. You could use the Pebio brand of paint made for stained glass. You want the porcelain versus the vitreous style paint. The porcelain gives a nice consistent uh, color whereas the vitreo paint is just a very light shading of the color. The instructions for that are to air dry at 24 hours and then bake it in the oven for 40 minutes at 325 F. I am not very artistic so my issue would be how to mark uh, or use a stencil to hand letter those. Also I was using a pointed small artist brush. The uh, porcelain paint is pretty thick. I don't know how to make uh, very fine or thin um, letters using that method. But if you're artistic and you know how to uh, use uh, the right brushes and everything else, this might be an option for you is to hand letter uh, the lettering that you need. A fifth option would be to paint the letters through a stencil. I actually tried this method. I applied blue masking tape to the glass first. On top of that I put some uh, white Elmer's glue and I put down a paper stencil of the letters on top of the blue masking tape. Then I cut out the letters using an exacto razor knife. One thing you'll find is you really can't uh, cut out uh, the little dots or leave the little dots like in the letter A uh, there's a little round opening in the center that will come off. So I went ahead and I used uh, Pevio porcelain paint. I air dried it 24 hours. Uh, one option I found in the studies was that rather than waiting 24 hours, I just heat my oven up to about 120 F and uh, put the piece of glass in for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes. That sets the paint uh, good enough at that point so you avoid the 24 hour wait. And I had to apply a second or third coat to some spots to get the letters to be consistently the same color. What I noticed was my blue masking tape was not sticking well to the glass. I use this technique on wood a lot, or bricks, and the tape sti uh, sticks pretty well, but does not stick well to glass. So after I removed the uh, blue masking tape, I had a lot of paint bleed, as you can see in the upper picture. So I used a straight razor and an X-Acto knife to remove the excess paint. Then I went in and I marked those little round areas like the little center in the letter A and I re with a pencil and I removed those with an X-Acto knife. When I got done I oven baked uh, the piece of glass for 40 minutes at 325 F. On, uh, later on on the uh, clock hands I tried the, some Hobby Lobby contact paper. This was suggested on the stained glass addicts group. I was really impressed with the contact paper because I had zero bleeding of the paint under the contact paper. And if I had to make these letters again, I would use contact paper. Uh, blue masking tape just does not stick well, stick well enough to glass. The sixth option for how to make <clears throat> letters on stained glass is rather interesting. It uses a thin brass sheet where you cut out the letters from the thin brass. Now the letters can, can be connected to each other, like in script, or they could be separate letters. You then uh, tin the letters, which really means putting on the flux and then a very thin layer of solder. And then if you want to have some depth to the letters, you could actually build up and keep putting on more solder to build up the depth if you, if you want that. Then you could solder the letters to an adjacent 
an existing joint in your stained glass panel or you could use E6000 glue to apply the tin uh, letters to the glass. There are some interesting and very uh, beautiful examples on the stained glass addicts group of this method being used. The seventh method would be to apply the letters using adhesive sheets or glue them on. You could cut out letters from vinyl adhesive sheets and apply them to the glass. Or you could buy manufactured letters and then glue them on the glass using E6000 glue. The last and eighth option would be simply to make the letters from glass and then solder them in like you would other pieces of glass in your stained glass panel. One limitation of this is how small uh, in height of letters you can make. As the height begins to get smaller, you reach the point that it's not feasible to cut pieces of glass that small and still be able to solder them in and see some glass. But if you have larger, large enough letters, this is an option. Now I'd like to share with you some lessons learned from my project that might help you on your future projects. For lettering, you need to use the right type of Pebio paint. The Vitria style of Pebio paint is very faint <clears throat> and will not really give you solid colors for your letters. The porcelain uh, style paint, though, does give nice solid color letters. You might have to put on a second or third coat to get a completely solid letter color. Pebio gives guidelines for air drying their paints 24 hours, followed by baking them in an oven for 40 minutes at 325F. I experimented to try to eliminate the 24-hour air drying requirement, and I found that if you bake the glass piece about 20 minutes at 120F in the oven, it will set the paint fine. When I did get all done, I did do a final bake for the 40 minutes at 325F in the oven as recommended. As I said earlier, I tried using blue masking tape on the glass as part of the stencil for the word Fairberry. I got a lot of Pebio paint bleeding under the blue masking tape and it took a long time to carefully remove it with a razor blade and razor knife. Later I tried using contact paper from Hobby Lobby and I was really excited because I got zero bleeding of the paint. So contact paper is definitely the way to go for making a stencil. The fourth thing is you can apply small dots of Pebio porcelain paint using a toothpick as the brush. When painting larger size dots, you should try to keep the paint height a minimum. If your blob is too tall or too deep, you run the risk of the dot bubbling when you cook it in the oven. The sixth uh, lesson learned I had on my project, I was able to represent uh, the clock numbers on my small clock using dots of Pebio paint. So I needed to know where do I put the dots so they're all in the right spacing. So I made a paper pattern and I hole punched where each dot goes and then used that as my target where to take the toothpick and put the drop of paint. I held the paper pattern in place with two-sided tape. Now one design guideline I used designing on this project uh, that I learned from other projects was keep the minimum width of a piece of glass at least a quarter of an inch. That worked pretty well on this project. If you go below a quarter of an inch in width, the copper foil and solder will completely cover the glass and you really won't see any glass. And as you shrink the size of a stained glass panel, and in this case using a large building, you're trying to shrink it down, the, the smaller you make the stained glass panel, uh, the less of the smaller architectural details you can show because of that quarter inch requirement. I want to keep as many details as possible so this drove the size of the finished stained glass panel to be a little larger than what I initially thought but it turned out pretty good. I designed this stained glass panel in a program called SketchUp. Uh, I made a scale drawing of the building. It's actually a 3D model of the building. Uh, the clock tower and top is rotated 45 degrees from the main building. So I designed the small pieces in the clock tower to be the quarter inch minimum width. But when you rotate that 45 degrees, that drops that quarter inch width down to less than an eighth. 
So on a couple little details, I had to eliminate those because I could not make uh, those small smaller pieces of glass. So if you have a project where you're you have things that you're going to be rotating at 45 degrees, keep in mind that when you look at it from one direction, it might be smaller than your minimum requirement. Here's a photograph of my finished project in the sunlight. You can see the yellow rectangular piece of glass in the bottom left hand corner with the word Fairbury. That's the one I did painting through the uh, blue masking tape and a stencil. You can see the little red uh, dots above the windows and above the horizontal line. Uh, that's little drops of Pebio paint. You can also see the dots, black dots on the clock faces. And then the clock hands I painted uh, with Pebio paint and I used contact paper as the stencil. So in summary, there are at least eight different ways you could make lettering on stained glass. And there's probably even more that I've not included in this video. So, choose the one that works the best for your particular project.